On October 5th, 2021, the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has decided to award the Nobel Prize in Physics for groundbreaking contributions to our understanding of complex physical systems, with one half jointly to Shukuro Manabe and Klaus Hasselmann for the physical modeling of Earth's climate, quantifying variability and reliably predicting global warming, and the other half to Giorgio Parisi for the discovery of the interplay of disorder and fluctuations in physical systems from atomic to planetary scales. Let us now take a closer look at both topics to learn about the science behind this year's prize. Part 1. Predicting the climate Around 200 years ago, the French physicist Joseph Fourier already understood that the temperature around him must be influenced by the atmosphere. He thought that the energy from the sun's radiation is reflected from the ground and stored in the air as dark heat, a process which we now call greenhouse effect. We now know that the heating of our atmosphere is due to so-called greenhouse gases, for instance carbon dioxide, methane or water vapor. We can easily calculate how important the atmosphere is for the temperature on our planet by balancing the incoming and outgoing energy flux, that is energy per time and area, to determine the temperature. The incoming energy flux is determined by the sun via the solar constant S0 and the surface bond albedo alpha, which states how reflective our planet's surface is. Satellite measurements give us a value of around 0.3, which is averaged between 0.9 of energy reflective clouds and 0.2 of energy absorbing oceans. We also divide this by 4, since only one half of our planet receives this energy at any time, and we also have to account for the Earth being round. The outgoing energy is determined by the Stefan Boltzmann law, hence we get temperature to the power of 4, the Stefan Boltzmann constant sigma, and the emissivity epsilon which we assume to be one in a perfect black body for simplicity. All of this gives us a temperature of around minus 18 degrees Celsius. Now, what if we include the atmosphere? If we assume one layer of atmosphere, which sends some part of the outgoing radiation back to us, the situation looks like this, where we assume that the atmosphere emits the same amount of energy upwards and downwards. This means that the flux Fg from the ground must be equal to 2 times Fa from the atmosphere. And if we look at our planet from outer space, the emitted flux from the atmosphere must be equal to the flux coming from the sun. Long story short, we get a factor of 2 here, so that we multiply the previous temperature by 2 to the power of 1 over 4, which yields a comfortable temperature of around 30 degrees Celsius. This is a very simple model of our atmosphere, but in the 1950s, the Japanese physicist Shukuro Manabe used computer simulations to calculate the effect of greenhouse gases in a more sophisticated model. In his model, he assumed a one-dimensional vertical slice of atmosphere and implemented not only the effects of greenhouse gases, but also vertical transport via convection, where cold air sinks down and hot air rises to the top. The results of these simulations showed that while nitrogen or oxygen have negligible effects on the temperature, CO2 has a big impact. Doubling the amount of CO2 led to a temperature increase of 2 degrees Celsius. Manabe then also developed a three-dimensional model and published it in 1975. Later, Klaus Hasselmann worked on the connection of weather and climate. On the one hand, weather is highly chaotic is different for different places and can change rapidly in a few days. On the other hand, we want to develop climate models that allow us to predict the planet's climate some hundred years into the future. The big question is, how is the rapid change in weather connected to the long-term evolution of climate? Earlier in history, Laplace imagined an all-knowing demon that would be, in theory, able to predict the future if we just specify the positions and velocities of all particles in the universe. In practice, it's impossible to measure the temperature, air pressure and so on precisely enough for Laplace's thought experiment to work. We don't need to simulate the motion of all water molecules in the ocean 
to know something about water currents. Hasselmann's idea was to view the quickly changing weather as noise, that is, random fluctuations. He then formulated a stochastic climate model, which was modeled after Einstein's Brownian motion of a random walk. Using his model, Hasselmann was able to demonstrate that rapid changes in weather can indeed lead to slow temperature changes in our climate. To get an idea of how this works, imagine going on a walk with a dog in the snow. The dog running around you represents the rapidly changing weather and you represent the slow changing climate. By looking only at the dog's footprints in the snow, we can infer whether you moved quickly or stood still for some time. Hence, by looking at the weather, we can get information about the climate. Furthermore, Hasselmann determined clear fingerprints of human impact on our climate. His research helped us answer big questions like, yes, the earth is heating up. Yes, this is caused by increased amounts of greenhouse gases. No, this cannot be explained only by natural causes. And yes, humans are the reason for this increasing temperature. Part 2. Complex Frustration The field of complex systems was developed from statistical mechanics, where a single particle's position or momentum is relevant, instead we're considering ensemble quantities, like temperature as average kinetic energy, or pressure as average momentum exchange on a surface. One example of a complex system is spin glass, which exhibits a phenomenon known as frustration. Let's consider a simple example. In a square lattice, anti-ferromagnetic ordering can be realized very easily. But what about a triangular lattice? If the first spin is up, then the second spin must be down. But then, how do we align the third one? This is called frustration, and a similar situation arises in spin glass. Usually, the ground state configuration is ferromagnetic, that is, all spins point in the same direction. However, in a frustrated system, metastable configurations can form where not all spins point in the same direction. This can be achieved by quenching the system, that is, changing some parameter very quickly. Since the number of possible metastable configurations is huge, it is useful to apply a trick when calculating the partition function of the system. For instance, in order to calculate the free energy, we need the logarithm of the partition function. By using a mathematical identity, we can write the logarithm as z to the power of n. Physically, this means calculating the same system n times, where each new system is a copy or replica of the previous one, so that this method is called replica trick. This equation can be explained by writing z to the power of n using an exponential function and then writing this exponential in a Taylor series. Note that there is a bit of a problem, because when calculating n copies, we use n as an integer. But in order to use the equation, we need n to continuously go to zero. Giorgio Parisi studied such systems using the replica trick and introduced a new parameter, the overlap q alpha beta. Here, alpha and beta denote different replicas, that is, two realizations of the same system. The angled brackets denote taking the average, and sigma represents a spin. This overlap q can take on values between minus 1 and plus 1, where plus 1 means that the replicas alpha and beta are almost the same, minus 1 means that they are the opposite of each other, and 0 means that they are totally unrelated. Furthermore, the self-overlap q alpha alpha measures the size of the state in phase space, where a large q alpha alpha means less phase space, that is, the realization is less probable. Using this overlap q alpha beta, it is possible to define a probability distribution of overlaps, p of q, which tells us how similar or correlated all the replicas are. There are a lot more topics to cover here, like replica symmetry breaking or ultramatricity, which we will hopefully discuss in another video. In summary, our changing climate is an urgent and important issue, so it's fitting that this year's Nobel Prize has been awarded to research in climate and complexity physics. Congratulations to Shukuro Manabe, Klaus Hasselmann, 
and Giorgio Parisi. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.